There's a story in The Athletic today that is trending right now, as Trey Lance trending, that Jeff Christensen, the uh, quarterback coach, talking about how he worked out with Trey Lance and his off-season workouts with Patrick Mahomes has vastly improved Trey Lance's footwork, I guess, throwing style, just everything, calling it, quote-unquote, a substantial jump. Mm -hmm. I think Trey is the best that we've seen him right now. Talking about when you watch his feet, his timing, this is Kyle Shanahan. He's throwing, how he's throwing the ball. He's in such a better place now than he was last year at this time. And the, the last thing anybody should do in this position, in this world, at this time, on a show like this one, is say anything concrete about the 49ers quarterback situation. There's nothing to be said about it mm-hmm. concretely. Because as last year showed, anything is possible. And as this year is currently, as we stand, their quarterback from last year's NFC Championship game is coming back from elbow surgery. The quarterback from the previous year's NFC Championship game, as we mentioned, is now a T-shirt meme (laughs) for the Raider (laughs) Nation. Represented out here on the Rich Eisen Show by Jason <laughs> Feller. That's where he is. The backup quarterback, one thinks, potentially could be either Trey Lance again or the third overall pick from the 2018 draft, and Sam Darnold, who everybody assumes is now going to go to San Francisco and become the franchise quarterback that the Jets couldn't help materialize. And then, of course, that Carolina had hopes for and never materialized there. But I will say this. The best scenario for the 49ers, the best scenario for the 49ers, is if Brock Purdy can come back and be the kid that finished last year the way that he finished last year. That's the best scenario. No, normally I'd say it's got to be the kid that they traded all the way up to number three overall just a couple of drafts ago because that's got to be the case for a general manager and a coach who put their eggs in that basket and then the kid doesn't pan out. The owner's going to go get these guys. Clearly not the case in San Francisco. The Jets are the only other team that I can think of that drafted somebody in the top five that didn't pan out at the quarterback position (laughs) that has uh, not led to a complete... Dracaris type fire breathing situation for for that front office and coach combination as well. And Aaron Rodgers, the fact that the owner in New York's like, go ahead and do that. I'll spend sixty million dollars on somebody. Go ahead, do that. Let's uh, let's scrap the kid that we drafted second overall. By the way, right in front of Trey Lance. Let's scrap that kid for the moment. Let's place him aside and go with Aaron Rodgers. And you, general manager Joe Douglas, and you, coach Robert Sala. You're welcome to stay here, and we let's go win a championship together. That's rare, too. But I think Purdy would be, for me, that would be the best option for the San Francisco 49ers because what better way to build a team than with a quarterback who has three years left on a seventh-round draft choice contract? That is the mother load. The mother load. You're hoping if you draft somebody like Lance, you can win a championship in his first contract before he gets paid. You're already going to start seeing the way that the Eagles are planning on building around Jalen Hurts and how long they could sustain the team that went last year to the Super Bowl. And hopefully all these Georgia Bulldogs that Howie Roseman is drafting can be championship quality. You're seeing how they're trying to build this team right now and they'll play it out with Hurts and as long as they can with the current construct based on him now getting paid and how Cincinnati will look when Burrow gets paid and how the charges will look when Herbert gets paid. And I'm sure they've planned it all out. The 49ers just going year by year. There's no way they were planning out their salary cap based on, oh, if Brock Purdy can take us to the promised land. And Lance can change all of that and just say, you know what? 
That would be nice if we can go with our first contract kid in Purdy, but we'll do that with Lance. And he has, however, the biggest upside. Because if he could run this offense with the actual ability to run it and run it 20, 30 yards at a time with his legs, potentially. Well, that's the big upside. Question is, is when is he going to get this shot? Because Sam Darnold could beat him out. So when you're seeing the fact that he's made a substantial leap, I can't wait to see what that would look like. Mm -hmm. And the question is, is when will we see that preseason action? Do you read into that? In preseason, because guess who they go and visit week one now, you know, at Pittsburgh before they visit the Rams here and then have a home opener on a Thursday night against the Giants before a week five Sunday nighter at home against Dallas with a home game with Arizona built in three in a row at home. So that's my first thought when you see Trey Lance has made a substantial leap. If he's made a substantial leap, Maybe this is also something can we can look at and say, okay, Purdy's fine. We've seen enough out of him last year. We're going to go to work with him, and Sam Donald's our backup. And who needs Trey Lance at the outset of a season? Who wants this kid? You already heard that teams like Minnesota were the ones making calls. As we know, the 49ers said they were just t- taking them. Mm-hmm. Difference between taking calls and making calls on Trey Lance. That's why I I, I love seeing this stuff, love talking about it, even on May 19th, because these are the times when you just file it away. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 